Last video, we looked at some of the elements that go into composition. And I want to remind you to please read the handout. Please read appropriate chapters that go that are in the books that go with this particular handout. There, it's just I cannot begin to fill you in on everything that goes into composition. It's a huge, huge subject. And it's going to take a while for you to process all of this. So please read it. It'll help you understand things bit by bit by bit. This video, we're going to talk about positive shapes and negative spaces. Now, most of you know, maybe not all of you know, but your positive shapes, that, that is your subject matter. So that's your flowers and leaves. The negative spaces are the bits that are between those leaves and infinity, basically. Now, what I want to really impress on you guys is that your positive shapes and negative spaces cannot begin interacting with one another until you have some type of border. I'm going to step back and forth for a little bit between the camera and so I'm going to disappear and come back and all that good stuff because what I want to impress upon you is the importance of how things fall into space. Alrighty. If I draw, and these are going to be very, very, very rough because I don't want to have to take time to do them really, really fancy. If we have this here, just simple shape, it's like, eh, it doesn't do anything. If I We now have a boundary, but it's still, I mean, it's still really, really boring. I mean, not that the shape itself is very exciting, which it's definitely not, but right now it's just hanging out there in space. If I make a border, it starts to look a little bit more interesting. It's still fairly boring because it's right in dead center. So your eye goes there and it just kind of hangs out there and doesn't do anything else. So if we start cropping our image, do you see here how there's starting to be some stuff going on in there? It's starting to be more interesting. Now, I'm going to take just a simple circle. And I want you to watch how this changes. Note how your eye sort of looks at this. And when I'm looking at this, at least what's in my little screen over here on my camera, I'm noticing that this almost touches. So where this is touching, it's kind of forming an accidental center of interest in a way because your eye pauses there trying to 
figure that out. And I hope you also notice as soon as I added that in, did your eye just drop right in there and just stop? That is, that's the beginnings of the making of a focal point. And it's also the beginnings of a focal point where you don't want a focal point because you don't want a focal point that's at the edge of the painting. And we'll go over this more later, but I just want you to point you out. To me, because this is this particular circle is not dead center, I like the spacing. I think it's it's an interesting kind of rhythm and balance within this particular frame. But if I take out this frame, it's just it's just a randomly placed circle. You know, there's nothing going on to make to make it visually exciting, to make it make you want to look at it. It's just a circle there and it's a fairly boring circle. I, this one to me is just dead center again. So I don't, it's like, eh, this one's a little bit more interesting, but there's a lot of dead white space up there and this upper left. So I look at this and then I kind of go into around in here and I come back to this. But I'm kind of wondering what's going on why is there much, so much space up here? What is this for? Now, if this had been, and this is not flower, but a landscape kind of thing, but if this had been some kind of little creature, and here's the horizon line, this starts making a little bit more sense. You've got this huge open sky, and you got this little creature down here. So this border, which is for us in the botanical art world, it's our mat, basically. It's the edge of your painting, the, the e four outer edges of your painting. That border is extremely important to keep your composition lively and interesting. So I just want you to start thinking about that. Now, also, you also need to start paying attention to how your eye flows throughout a painting or a composition. And you, you can just open up any kind of art book and just start looking at it and start figuring out, oh, how, how is my eye moving through this composition? Is it going in a zigzag? Is it going around in a circle? And for most botanical art and illustration, we generally have a circle because it's just so, so peaceful feeling. But you can also have things go, going into a traditional triangular, equidistant triangular, or an isosceles triangle. You can get some very interesting effects by have it placing, you know, some focal points um, along that particular, you know, along the points of the triangle. So, um, as you go through those books as well, look for directional lines. And we'll get into this more in demonstrations and whatnot. But there, when you look at paintings, you're going to see these lines that literally direct the eye. And those are going to be partly your positive shapes and negative spaces that are going to be directing your eye to focal points and especially your center of interest. So the positive shapes and those negative spaces, they're very, very important for, for your composition, for your painting. And you want to literally know as close as you possibly can, and it can change, but you want to have a frame, a mat edge, know where your mat is going to be approximately from the get go of your painting. It's not something that's left over to the very, very end and is guesswork. You really want to start doing that from the very beginning. And we'll start addressing that in the next class when we start on our thumbnail sketches. But first, we've got to get through all these basic concepts about composition. You are going to want to always, as much as possible, try to remember to draw that frame, that mat edge, the crop lines of your painting from the get-go. 
without that frame, your positive spaces and negative spaces cannot support your subject matter, your center of interest, or your storyline, your intent for what you want the viewer to be seeing in your painting, uh, getting out of. Now then, also within a composition, we're going to create a rose bush. This is going to be a very, very thick rose bush. What we have here is all positive spaces. There is really no negative spaces. How interesting is this? We have this giant mass. Okay, so I am take the eraser and I just start Kind of erasing, I'm just trying to get rid of that corner. It's starting to look a little bit more interesting. I'm not liking this little line right here, so I'm gonna break up that line a little bit with a shape, and then this is too triangular. But we still have this giant mass in here. Now, if I was to take this, You see how we're starting to get some, a little bit more interesting shapes. Now, if I do this, I've just created a giant, giant river. And it's, a, it's negative space that acts as directional line. And this is caused by, sometimes you have masses that are so thick, so much positive shapes, and when you add the negative space, it's almost like the eye is looking for relief, a, a release as well, relief and release. It's finally, it's got some place to go. So it's got a place to go, but look how it just kind of takes you in and it takes you out of the painting. Now, for those of you who are going to go on and get into shows and whatnot and try and do that, you don't want people going in and out of your painting very quickly because you want the that viewer to hopefully stay on that painting and buy your painting instead of looking at this and being shot off to the next painting that is not your painting but somebody else's painting. So we don't want these kinds of rivers. I can get this going and I have effectively broken up that river. So that's just something to be thinking about. You also want to be looking out for, let me glance at my notes here. Um, and this is so easy for us to do. How interesting. It's just fascinating, isn't it? Two shapes of eagle size. Now, watch what happens when I do this. It's a bit more interesting, isn't it? Now, if I do, that's even a little bit more interesting. Your eye just goes boinky, boinky, boinky. And it, it, so it's kind of an, a, a more interesting composition. If I do, Boink. Where does your eye go? Your eye goes boinky boinky, stays. Because we've got a little bit of a focal point right there. Well, we've got definitely a center of interest. So if we were to, you know, this could be the pit on a cherry. 
It's as simple as a center of interest can be. You also want to try and avoid, you know, a lot of the subjects that we'll be working with are very, very vertical. So it's very, very easy to make things extremely symmetrical and I am the queen of making things extremely symmetrical even when I'm trying to make them asymmetrical. Draves me crazy. So we want to try, especially if you've got, you know, you got a flower right here. You want to keep things a little bit more asymmetrical. You also want to try and keep things at an even numbers instead of even numbers. So we've got, you know, basically a really scribbly thing, but we've got three things. If I take this out, not quite as interesting as having three. And if I was to do of these two little compositions, I'd take the two over this because it is so linear. It, there's just nothing nothing of value in it. It's just really visually boring. And this at least, you know, we could, let's see if I can get something. This is getting a lot more interesting because we've got an uneven number of shapes. So these are just some basic things just to be thinking about. We'll go into them, uh, you know, more in detail as we move along. But I just wanted to go over these and let me check my notes and make sure I've got everything I need. Alrighty. Yeah. So next up, we're going to go into what is the center of interest and what are focal points and how do I make focal points? So that's up for our next video.